Bikes and scooters are really fun. First of all, it's a brand new product to just not us, uh, but also to the world. Hey there, I'm Molly from Springboard and I'm here with Shay, a data scientist at Uber. Shay, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. So let's start from the beginning. How did you become a data scientist at Uber? In college, I studied statistics and then computer science. And after I graduated, I knew I wanted to be a data scientist somewhere. Um, Uber was my top choice because I used the product a lot and I felt like I had a really good understanding of what it's like to be a customer. Um, and number two, I just was always intrigued by the product itself. I loved sometimes seeing the cars, little cars move around and when you book a ride, they're always so, so on point with you know, the ETA and with the amount charged and everything was just working so smoothly and I wanted to know what was the mechanics behind it and I felt like joining the company would help me get there. So within Uber, what teams do you work on? Um, right now I'm working on the bikes and scooters team and previously I was on driver. Oh cool, how do they differ? The biggest difference between the two teams is that on bikes and scooters, we not only have mobile data, but bikes and scooters all have hardware on there that capture a lot of IoT device like data, a lot of firmware data. Um, all of these different data could add another dimension to how you can understand the user's journey. When they're actually on the scooter or bike, what exactly is their experience? Because the entire scooters and bikes experience extends from booking it and the entire trip and ending it and then reusing it and being able to consistently find it on the street. What's it like working with bikes and scooters? Bikes and scooters are really fun. First of all, it's a brand new product to just not us, uh, but also to the world. And I would say that you have to deal with data from a lot of different sources. For example, right now, um, it's you're not just dealing with customer data anymore. You're looking at an IoT device and you're looking at mobile and you're looking at the, you have to use all this data to tie together a user's journey from where they're trying to go somewhere and they're trying to find a way to get there. and they're choosing to use this product and then the entire on-trip experience till afterwards. And how do you repeatedly engage them? You have to synthesize an understanding of what is actually happening to a user and what do they really want out of your product. Um, so that's the really challenging part is combining these different types of data together. What are some exciting data principles that you're able to apply every day at work? I think the most exciting part is when you run experiments, sometimes you run into network effects, sometimes you run into cannibalization, and you have to think of creative ways to address these problems while keeping your experiment results very robust. One example is say you want to run promotions on a set of bikes and scooters um, for a certain area and you want to see if that increases how many trips people are actually taking. Now by applying the promotion, you take away more supply for from the control group if the treatment group actually do end up taking more bikes and scooters which might lower your conversion rate for your control group basically how do you make sure that your environmental controls are actually controlled what excites you about working with data science every day i think the most exciting part about being a data scientist is being able to derive insights and make decisions from incomplete information. Every day you're making decisions and you never know if they're right or wrong um, and you never have complete information. But data science actually quantifies that sort of uncertainty and I think it's a very empowering experience to be able to help businesses make decisions and move forward even when they have incomplete information. And then in contrast, what's something that you might not like as much about being a data scientist? I think one thing that all data scientists hate the most is messy data that they have to clean up and somehow debug. I encounter this in my day-to-day -day work and you have to write a lot of sequels and a lot of that piece of the job is unavoidable, but I think it's also nice to always see that as an opportunity to improve the platform and infra. It's a good opportunity for people to say, hey, maybe I wanna contribute a piece of open source code to write something that could help make other people's lives easier or suggest something to your company to build internal tools um, or even build it yourself. So would you mind speaking um, to your experience first being in a formal educational setting and then immediately going into the workforce, what was that like? And do you have any advice for people who want to have a similar career path as you? I 
think it was very exciting and overwhelming at the same time. The things you learn in school are all printed on a textbook and a lot of times they're outdated, sort of old material. And in the workforce, you realize that people are using new methods, they're using experimental methods, and people are constantly on top of new papers that are published, especially in a world of data science where new algorithms are developed every year um, at conferences. And I think one piece of advice I would have is to stay on top of news and stay informed, go to conferences, meet people, because data science is not a super mature field and there's always opportunities for improvement. You should never be afraid to try new algorithms yourself or even try to develop a new method. Cool. Um, what's your favorite podcast? My favorite podcast is Seneca. Um, it's actually a podcast that describes present day Chinese politics and economics um, and everything about China that you need to know. Um, I like to stay informed since I left China when I was 14. Um, so it's a good way to learn about how the macro is going in my home country. If you could travel back in time, what decade or period of time would you go back to? If I could also choose where I can be, then I would say that I want to travel back in time to work with Alan Turing. Um, love the movie Imitation Game. I think that was a main game changer for me in college when I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. Well, I think that's all we have for today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.